Hello, today we are going to start our new lecture on sputtering techniques. In our last lecture, that lecture number 26, we have uh, discussed about the different types of deposition techniques. So, in this particular lecture, we are going to introduce the special techniques which is called the sputtering techniques. So, before going to start that uh, sputtering techniques, first let us know that what is the sputtering, what the method tells us actually. So, sputtering is a one kind of methods in where the ions bombard on a surface, several things can happen, right, right, reflections, sticking or maybe the adsorptions, sputtering, ion implantation, electron and photon emissions. So, when all this is taking place onto the material surface, just in this particular topic, we are going to discuss only about the sputtering. So, from this particular figure, we can understand that there is one vacuum chamber, then in that vacuum chamber, we are injecting some kind of sputtering gas, generally the argon gas we are going to use in this particular case as a inert gas, that argon actually it is divided into a, a argon ion, that ion is hitting onto the sputtering target, then when it is bombarding onto the sputtering target, then it is that sputtering target is releasing certain kind of ions or maybe the atoms and which is directly coming onto the substrate and making a thin film on top of that. So, before going to know about the sputtering techniques, let us know that what type of energy is required for doing this sputtering. So, but ion source, ion surface interaction depends on the ion beam energy. So, as I already discussed that we are generating certain kind of ion energy, that energy is hitting our sputtering target by which that sputter target atom is coming. So, if the ion energy is less than 5 electron volt, it is known as the adsorption or the reflection process. If it is varies from 5 to 10 electron volt, the it will create the surface damage and migrations. If it will lie in between the 3 to 10 kilo electron volt, that process is known as the sputtering techniques and if it is more than 10 kilo electron volt, it is known as the ion implantations. So, here the main criteria is that energy, that how much energy I am giving directly to that target or maybe the sputtering material, so that it can release the atoms and it can deposit it onto the substrate. So, sputtering the definitions is a technique used to deposit thin films of a material onto a su surface, generally we are calling it as a substrate by first creating a gaseous plasma and then accelerating the ions from this plasma into some source materials is called the target. Source materials is eroded by the arriving ions by energy transfer and is ejected in the form of neutral particles, either individual atoms or clusters of atoms and molecules. So, what I have already discussed that here we are making that argon ion, then that argon ion is hitting that sputtering target, then this kind of neutral atoms it is directly coming from this sputtering target and it is depositing onto the substrate like a thin film. So, First, we have to know that what are the fundamental things that is working behind the sputtering techniques. So, a negative electrical potentials is applied to the target material to be sputtered which act as cathode and the positive anode or ground is the chamber body. So, in this particular figure, we can understand that here our anode is known as a substrate. We are having that cathode is target which is grounded and then we are making certain kind of electron uh, electrical field inside by which we are creating that incident argon ions and which is hitting the target substrate materials and then from there the uh, 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 which is uh, uh, hitting the target materials and from there it is creating certain kind of plasma and that plasma is directly hitting onto the substrate itself so in this particular case, we can see that we are having that incident argon particles, directly it is hitting onto the uh, sputtering materials, then it is releasing the atoms, that atoms directly it is depositing onto the surface, but again that argon plus, again it is absorbing the electrons inside the chambers and then it is becoming the neutral. So, when it is releasing the energy. So, it is generating certain kind of plasma over there. So, that plasma is directly coming out for as a exhaust. 
the electrical potential will cause free electrons to accelerate when these electrons collide with a process gas atoms the strip an electron from the gas atom and creates a positively charged gas ion. The positively charged ion is then accelerated towards the target. So, from this figure you can understand that here this is generating the plasma gas over there or maybe the plasma ions over there. So, the ion carries enough energy with it to knock off or sputter some of the target material. The target material will then collect on the substrate itself. Additionally, a plasma glow is created when the ions recombine with free electrons into the lower energy state. So, as I already have discussed that some argon plus ion which is directly hitting those substrate leftover argon ion again it is absorbing those electrons and it is become the free electrons into the lower energy state. When a free electron recombines with an ion it has a voltage, but the ion needs relatively less voltage. So, this excess voltage is let up as light or plasma. So, this is known as the plasma during processing the light is sometimes sometimes called as a plasma glow. So, the best example for uh, better understand of this uh, sputtering process is like a pool game. So, you are having some balls then you are hitting that balls so that it can hit the target materials and then from the target materials it directly go to the pocket where is nothing but the substrate materials. So, what are the considerations in sputtering of atoms due to impact of ions? the key principle of sputtering is energy and momentum conservations. So, here you can see that we have given two balls into two different colors. So, one is in blue in color, one is in yellow in color. Actually, the two balls means two atoms. One atom is the argon plus atoms, another atoms is directly which is coming from the target material. So, these atoms is having certain mass. So, unless and until the mass of these two atoms will be equal, the sputtering will be possible maximum case the maximum efficiency we can achieve when the more or less the mass of those atoms will be equal. So, from these particular equations some momentum energy is generating that is p equal to m v and some kinetic energy is generating it is called a k equal to half m v square. So, this should be the equal one then maximum energy transfer occurs in such a collisions when the masses are equal. So, from this particular case you can understand that m 1 and m 2 is the ratio of two masses of the argon and the target material. Then when the masses are almost one that means, masses are almost equal you can find that you are getting maximum energy in this particular zone. So, that means, when the masses of the those uh, gases or maybe the molecules will be the same we will get the maximum efficiency of the sputtering techniques. So, when ion collides with the surface atoms on the target the energy transfer can knock some of these atoms of the surface. In any collisions momentum is observed if the collision is elastic kinetic energy is also conserved. The energies required for sputtering are much higher than the lattice bonding or vibration energies therefore, sputtering collisions can be considered elastic. Elastic means it is a perfect example of the pool game whatever I have already given. So, that means we are having two balls when the mass of these two balls is are equal then they will generate the same momentum over there. So, one ball just hit will another ball so that whatever the kinetic energy it will gain the same kinetic energy will be transferred into the same second ball and the second ball will achieve those kinetic energy and directly it will hit onto the material or maybe it will hit onto the substrate itself. So, here is the examples that where we are getting the complete elastic collisions, where we are getting the completely inelastic collisions. So, in the first cases you can see the size of these two balls means molecules are almost same. So, when these balls are hitting these balls, this the second ball is getting the same kinetic energy and momentum and it is rushing towards the substrate itself. So, in all of the kinetic energy is conserved the collisions is completely elastic so, generally we prefer this one for our sputtering techniques. But when you are talking about the inelastic collisions you can see from this particular figure that mass of these balls is half of the ball uh, uh, mass of the second one. So, here if it is m it is 2 m. So, your substrate uh, your uh, target materials molecules atoms mass are twice 
than the mass of your argon atom. So, what will happen? When it will hit, it is having some momentum, but that momentum it needs more, but it cannot generate that kind of momentum because momentum depends upon the m into v, but here the mass is half of this. So, when it will hit this material, it will not move. So, in that particular case, what we have to do? We have to either take the same balls or these materials momentum should be higher which is not possible at all. So, in this particular case what will happen? This targeted argon ions it will simply stick onto the target materials. So, there will not be any sputtering or maybe the bombardment will be taking place. So, if the objects stick together the collisions is completely inelastic some or all the kinetic energy is lost because it will not transfer from one body to the another body. What are the key factors for proper sputtering? First is the choice of the particular ions because we have to know that what ion will hit the another molecules or maybe the another materials and what are the masses of those materials. If the masses of those materials will be equal then you will get the best sputtering materials or maybe the best sputtering uh, results. The atomic weights of the ions and the target atoms should be close. Proper pressure for a sustainable plasma 10 to 1000 millitor you have to maintain inside the chamber. Suitable cathode voltage so that the ions will have sufficient energy for sputtering. E ion is more than 100 electron volt and voltage at the cathode should be varies in between 2 to 5 kilo volt. Correct angle for higher sputter yield 60 degree to 70 degree from normal, consistent substrate voltage and temperature for a clean flame. So, here I will in the next slide I will discuss about the what is the incidental angle generally we have to follow because I am having this uh, pointer in my hand. So, if simply I will drop this one it will hit the material directly or maybe that heat will hit the flow directly. So, what will happen? Whatever the molecules are there simply that molecules will go inside it or maybe it will be closely packed. But if I will throw it like this way into some angle, so what will happen? It will hit into some incidental angle so that some molecule from the target it will directly come and it will deposit onto the substrate itself. So, in this particular case you can see that when we are following that 90 degree means directly the incidental angle is perpendicular. So, you are getting totally 0 value, but if you are following the 60 to 70 degree then your efficiency is the higher means bombardment or maybe the releasing of that atoms from the target is higher. So, that is known as the sputter yield. So, sputter yield is nothing but the number of emitted particles, number of the incident particles means how many argon atoms I am using to releasing the target atoms. So, if I will release only one argon atoms and it will release 10 argon atoms, so the sputtering yield will be 10. So, that means I am using less energy, but still I am getting the more results. So, rate of deposition of thin flame is proportional to the sputter yield. It depends on type of target atoms, what type of atoms, whether it is closely packed or maybe the loosely packed or how much energy it needs to release from the target substrate uh, surface, binding energy of the target atoms, relative mass of ions and atoms, incident ion energy, angle of incident of ions. So, these all are the key parameters for choosing the sputtering material. Then from this particular graph we can see that angle of incidence and the sputtering yield. So, whatever already I have explained that if it is totally 90 degree that means simply it will drop from the top and directly hit to the bottom at that particular case the sputtering yield is almost 0. But when we are making it around 60 to 70 degree we are achieving the maximum sputtering yield strength. And the right hand side figure it is it has been taken from some journal paper. Uh, it has been uh, made by uh, R V Stewart and K V 
G K Weiner. So they have derived for different materials how the sputtering yield is varying. So we are having some kind of an ion energy. So at the 600 ion energy electron volt ion energy, so we are finding that at argon atmosphere the silver is giving the maximum sputtering yield, then copper, then palladium. So like this way it is going to the down. So we have till now discussed about that what is the sputtering, how we are doing the sputtering. Now our main concern is that why we are going to use this sputtering techniques for preparing the thin film. So in my last lecture and till now I have discussed about the different types of deposition techniques. So now I am discussing that what is sputtering, but before going to know we have to know that why we are doing this kind of sputtering techniques, what are the logic behind it, what we are getting from that. So instead of using direct heat to eject material from a source, we can bombard them with high speed particles. Good uniformity of the deposited thin flames and the thing is that here you are getting the purity of that particular uh, coating because you are hitting that material it is releasing certain kind of ions. So that ions is directly coming and it is depositing onto the thin flame. So here is a less chance of any kind of impurity over there and the whole thing is doing we are doing into the closed chamber. So and another key advantage of sputtering is that wide variety of material can be sputtered in a reactive atmosphere. Here this is a very good example of the molybdenum oxide thin flames. So in this particular case we are introducing the argon gas inside the chamber, then we are having some cathode sputtering target. So directly that argon atom is hitting those one, so then from here we are generating the molybdenum particles, then that molybdenum particles is going and it is depositing onto the substrate. But here we are doing the another more advanced techniques. What we are doing? We are giving a layer of oxide onto this substrate. So it is releasing the oxygens and the from the target you are getting the molybdenum. So what is happening? They uh, molybdenum and oxygen they are reacting together, they are forming the molybdenum oxide and then that molybdenum oxide is depositing onto the target material. So that is why it is called the some kind of reactive uh, sputtering techniques. Then we have to know that what are the different types of sputtering based on power sources. So first one is called the reactive sputtering, then direct current sputtering, magneton sputtering and radio frequency sputtering. So as I already told anyhow we have to agitate the uh, target material. So in which way we are going to uh, agitate the target material? Depending upon that we are doing this kind of classifications. Simply we can use the heat energy so that the sputtering atoms can come either maybe we can use certain kind of DC current or maybe some kind of magnetic force or maybe some kind of radio, uh, radio, radio, radio frequency so that that atoms can directly come from the sputtering target. So reactive sputtering in addition to argon plasma a reactive gas is introduced into the sputtering chamber. Compounds is formed by the elements of that gas combining with the sputter material that is titanium nitride. So I will give you the example into details. The reaction usually occurs either on the wafer surface or on that target itself. If we add more reactive gas at an instant the rate of reaction exceeds the sputtering rate. At this point the target surface switches from clean metal to compound over a short time. So the reactive sputtering is nothing but the we are introducing the argon gas into the chamber as well as we are using the another gas inside the chamber. So this sputtering uh, this argon gas and another reactive gas they will form a new ions that ions will heat your target materials then target materials will release some kind of ions that will mix with the uh, reactive gases they form a new material and then that new material will be depositing onto the 
substrate. So, in this particular gas a mixture of inert and reactive gases can be used for sputtering. So, for example, here we are taking the argon gas along with the oxygen. So, both we are introducing in into that chamber, then this oxygen argon and the oxygen they are creating into the uh, some ions, then that ions is heating onto your target materials, then that oxygens and then that these target materials ions will form a new materials and that new materials will be deposited onto the substrate itself. So, here if we want to generate the oxides, generally we are using the alumina oxide, silicon dioxide, tantalum oxide plus oxygen. If we want to make the nitrides, then tantalum nitride, titanium nitride, then uh, the mixture of nitrogen and ammonia gases we can use for carbides, we can use titanium carbide or maybe the tungsten carbide. So, these all are the various applications. So, what type of materials we are going to deposit onto the substrate? You have to know that materials, you have to take the ions of that particular materials, so that it will heat onto the target materials and then both will react each other and then they will form that material which we want and that will deposit onto our substrate itself. Next one is called the direct current sputtering. It is the simplest and most frequently used with electrically conductive target materials like metals because it is easy to control, relative low cost in power consumption. Only difference is that here we are using the DC current in between the cathode and anode and we are generating a high potential difference in between the cathode and anode by which your target materials is releasing certain kind of molecules and that is depositing onto your substrate materials. So, in a DC sputtering systems argon is ionized by a strong potential difference and are accelerated to a target. So, in this particular case we are applying the DC current so that the argon is becoming the argon plus ions then that is hitting the target material. After impact the target atoms are released and travel to the substrate where they form layers of atoms in the thin flame. So, these all are the machines uh, wh wh what we are using for direct current sputtering. So, in the right hand side figure it is giving you a schematic view of the, the di direct current sputtering process. What are the advantages? It can be relatively inexpensive cost effective solution for coating a wide range of decorative metal coatings. It is easy to adjust flame thickness because current is direct proportion to the flame thickness. So, if we need the more thickness then we have to keep this uh, experiment for the longer time. So, that the uh, potential difference will be the more and the thickness will be increased. And adhesion strength is very very high in this particular case. Then what are the disadvantages? It has limitations when it comes to dielectric target materials. The high pressures required to achieve a plasma can degrade film quality because our source target materials and substrate materials should have high temperature resistant because the plasma will be generated inside the chamber. So, it should not be decomposed with the plasma temperature or maybe the because of the plasma temperature. Only a small fraction of gas is converted to the ions that all are the disadvantage for this particular process. Then parameters for the DC sputtering, sputter voltage generally depends from minus 2 to minus 5 kilo volt, substrate bias voltage, substrate is being bombarded by electrons and ion from target, neutral atoms deposit independently put negative bias on the substrate to control this able to change properties of the flame significantly. What are the deposition rate changes with argon pressure increase with sputter yield. That means, whatever the potential difference will generate if we increase the potential difference. So, automatically the amount of the sputtering will be more. Not only that the molecular size of that argon gas and the target gas will be the same. So, that the sputtering yield will be increased. So, that we the sputtering uh, time will be less. Next one is called the RF sputtering radio frequency sputtering. So, in this particular techniques involves a running an 
energetic wavelength and inert gas to create the positive ions. The target material which will ultimately become the thin film coating is stuck by these ions and broken up into a fine spray that covers the substrate. Power supply is a high voltage radio frequency source often fixed at 13.56 megahertz. So, this is the standard value, but it depends or maybe varies from material to material, varies from target to target, varies from source to source, varies from substrate to substrate. So, the RA power source is then turned on sending radio waves through the plasma to ionize the gas atoms. Once the ions begin to contact the target material, it is broken into small pieces that travel to the substrate and begin to form a coating. So, these things we can easily get from this particular figure. So, here I am having the target. So, here we are generating certain kind of radio frequency over there, then that target we are having, we are doing the pumping over there, so that it will become into the vacuums. Then we are gen injecting the gas over there. Then that gas is divided into argon uh, plus ions. Then these ions and broken up into a fine spray that covers the substrate itself. Then it is hitting the target material that argon ion. Then we are having one shutter, means like a shield over there. So that ions is hitting through this shutter, so that it is divided into the small small particles, then that small particles is directly coming onto the substrate and it is giving a fine uniform coating. So, it works well with insulating parts, high efficiency can operate at lower argon pressure generally 1 to 15 milli torr. What are the disadvantages? High cost of the power supplies, relatively complicated matching networks that are needed to match the impedance of the system to reduce the reflected power. Next is called the magnetron sputtering. So, this one is also a one kind of sputtering process. So, till now we are discussing that simple the argon ion is cut coming, it is hitting your target materials, then it is generating certain kind of ions and molecules, that ion and molecules is directly going onto the substrate and it is depositing onto that particular material and doing the coating. But there is certain problems. The problem is that when we are generating that ions and molecules, some ion and molecules is going onto the substrate, some ions and molecules can hit your target materials, can hit the wall of your experiment chamber. So, what we are doing over here? Here we are generating certain kind of magnetic field with some kind of electron field, so that that ions cannot go to the anywhere directly it can go onto the substrate itself. So, here DC sputtering has two major problems, slow deposition rate, electron bombardment of the substrate is extensive and can cause overheating and structural damage. The development of magnetron sputtering deals with both of these issues simultaneously. So, by using magnets behind the cathodes, so these all are the magnets generally we are using behind the cathodes to trap the free electrons in a magnetic field directly above the target source. These electrons are not free to bombard the substrate to the same extent as with diode sputtering, because there is certain kind of weak argon ion atoms also. So, th that is that cannot do any kind of uh, effect onto that uh, sputtering techniques. So, we can capture those free electrons easily. At the same time, extensive circuita, uh, circuitous path curved by these same electrons when trapped in the magnetic field enhance their probability of ionizing a neutral gas molecule by several orders of magnitude. This increase in available ions and significantly increase the rate at which target material is eroded and subsequently deposited onto the substrate itself. So, simply we are generating certain kind of magnetic field through that this targeting uh, 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 atoms is rotating onto that and several times it is hitting this target materials, so that it can generate more molecules, more atoms and then directly it can go onto the substrate itself. So, it is a one kind of recycling process generally we are adapting in this particular case. So, how we are generating, what are the physics behind it? We can discuss or maybe we can give some light based on the Lorentz forces acting on electron during the magneton sputtering. What the forces uh, or maybe the words this laws is telling? The 
An electron in motion can be affected by both electrical and magnetic fields. An electric field and change the speed of the electron along with the direction of the field. A magnetic field changes the direction of the electron about the direction of the magnetic field. If the electric and magnetic fields are crossed perpendicular to each other, then the trajectory of the electron is a helix one. So, that is why we are getting this kind of picture in our previous slide. So, simply it is rotating into this particular path. What are the advantages? Magneton sputtering is a low cost and easy control method for film growth, especially suitable for large scale film depositions. What are the disadvantages? It is difficult for magnetic field to go out or to the outside of target. Therefore, thin target uh, can be used. That means, whatever the argon ions it is coming, all the argon ions is not hitting your target material. To hold this all argon atoms, so we are generating a magnetic field near the target materials, so that all the atoms can be captured. Then it can rotate and it can go beyond that field and it can hit the target, so that the efficiency will be more for this particular sputtering techniques. So, in our next slide just we are doing the comparison in between the different sputtering techniques which I have already discussed. So, first one is called the DC sputtering. So, where we are generally applying the DC voltage and the target must be conductive. In the radio frequency sputtering applies an AC voltage to the target at frequencies more than 50 hertz, target need not to be the conductive. This is the added advantage for this particular sputtering techniques where we can use the insulator materials, semiconductor materials or maybe any kind of materials. Then we have already discussed about the reactive sputtering where generally we are using some kind of reactive gases such as oxygen added to the chamber reacts with target produces forming the deposited materials. So, here we can introduce the nitrogen gas for making the nitrides, we can introduce the oxygen gas for making the oxides. So, any kind of uh, compound materials we can generate onto this particular sputtering techniques. And last one is the magneton sputtering, addition of magnets behind target controls the movement of the electrons, increased ionization at cathode leads to higher yields, because there is some uh, weaker argon atom or maybe some argon atom is directly not hitting to the target materials, it is escaping from that. So, we can capture all those electrons and so that it can hit the target materials and then target materials can release the molecules or maybe the ions. So, the efficiency will be much uh, better than the three sputtering techniques. So, now we have come to the last slide of this particular lecture and in summarize we can say that covered some basics of sputtering techniques, various stages in the process of sputtering already we have discussed, need of key parameters for proper sputtering principle of energy and momentum compensation during sputtering techniques. Briefly we have discussed about different sputtering techniques like DC, RF, magneton and the reactive. So, this is the whole summary of the sputtering techniques which we are using for making the thin flame. Thank you.